We're heading to the kitchen to sharpen your cooking skills. And we have a live performance that you won't want to miss. All that and more on Buckeye Interview. I'm Asia Gore. And I'm Al Spicani. Welcome to the season premiere of Buckeye Interview, your source for entertainment news. Welcome and back to campus. And welcome to Ohio State to all you new freshmen out there. Seems like so long ago since we stepped on campus. I know, and I, when I lived in the dorms, there wasn't really a real kitchen, so I ended up eating ramen noodles a lot. Well, hopefully freshmen don't follow your example. A uh, club on campus is helping students put down the ramen and pick up cooking utensils. Erica Motter has the scoop. Yeah. I heard about it at the involvement fair and I'm a vegetarian so I thought I'd come and check out the cooking. They say there's no such thing as a free lunch. Maybe that's why the RPAC workshop is at dinner time. Because the purpose of this club is to create awareness in the campus for different food habits which is healthy. This is a vegetarian cooking club but meat eaters love it too. been in the dorms for my freshman year and my sophomore year so there's not really much place to cook or time to cook so I guess it was just really nice to come here and be able to eat something that felt home cooked. The club is free to students and meets once a week Monday evenings. We started humbly with 10 people we get an average 80 to 90 people. I think it's delicious it's a little spicy but it's super good. It's a meat free meal but it all boils down to learning to eat healthy and try new things. A lot of people think vegetarian means eating only the salads so here we, have, we demonstrate Eating salads is not the only the vegetarianism. There's a thousands of preparations. Please thank. For Buckeye TV, I'm Erica Motter. Let's take a look at some upcoming events. Enjoy some traditional music, food, and dancing at the annual Greek Festival, Friday through Monday, September 2nd. College night at the Crew Stadium is September 4th. Get discount tickets and a free shirt. And the USA volleyball player, Carrie Walsh, is serving up some fun at the Archie Griffin Ballroom on September 5th. Just a couple of days ago, the world tuned in to the MTV Music Video Awards. And just like always, there was plenty to talk about, and it wasn't who won Best Video. There was a lot of controversy for sure, but what did everyone think was the craziest of all? Miley Cyrus kind of going crazy. I thought it was ridiculous, and it was just it's surprising seeing like how far she had come from when she was on, like when she was a little kid. I guess she's trying to like break her good girl kind of vibe that she gets from, that she got from Disney Channel. So I guess her this rebellious thing that she's doing is like a way to break free from her good girl vibe that she gets. <laughs> I'm glad that's not my daughter. My style, she is a good, she's a good singer and like she wasn't like on top of her game or anything like that but like if you're not gonna sing well, might as well put on a good show. You know, I have to agree. Miley was a little over the top. Uh, at first, when she had the leotard on, <laughs> I thought it was crazy and then she kind of ripped it off and it just went berserk from there. <laughs> All I have to say is my outlook on teddy bears has completely changed after that seeing that. When Rob was sick, he seemed a little uncomfortable. Yeah, and he's married and has a baby, right? And twice her age. Wow. <laughs> so, best performance? Probably NSYNC, Justin Timberlake. Can't go wrong with that. Well, there are a lot of good ones, but as always. So, let's see what uh, students thought of that. Justin. Justin. Justin's the man. He's a legend. Like they said, he's he's one of the best to ever do. He's the white Michael Jackson to me. NSYNC came back and that was awesome. I like I love NSYNC as a kid and that was just great to see them back together. And as wild as the VMAs were this year, I have a feeling that's just the beginning for the season's new television shows. Lauren White is taking a look at the shows you should know about. Thanks guys. Even though some students may have dreaded the return of classes and homework, there's still a lot to look forward to this fall. Football games, Halloween, and the thing I'm most excited for, new TV shows. Here's a look at some of the new must-watch shows of this season. It's been 11 years since we last saw Michael J. Fox in a leading role on Spin City. Now, at 52, he's back in the self-titled Michael J. Fox show in which he plays a news anchor who struggles balancing Parkinson's disease with his job and family life. The show premieres Thursday, September 26 at 9 on NBC. Everybody remembers The Avengers, the 2012 summer blockbuster that made more than $1.5 billion at the box office. Following that up is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., created by Avengers director Joss Whedon, which follows the S.H.I.E.L.D. team as they try to knock out villainous superhumans across the world. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premieres Tuesday, September 24th on ABC. Even with the new Star Wars movie on the horizon, mega director J.J. Abrams isn't quite done with TV. Almost Human, produced by Abrams and the team behind the cult smash Fringe, stars Carl Urban as a cop in a dangerous, futuristic world where the police force is made up of androids. Almost Human debuts Monday, November 4th at 8 on Fox. 
Funny man Andy Samberg, back on TV in his first starring role since leaving the cast of SNL last year, returns as a goofy detective in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The zany cop comedy created by the same team behind NBC's Parks and Recreation comes to Fox Tuesday, September 17th at 8.30 p.m. We last checked in with James Spader last year when he was the short-lived head of Dunder Mifflin Scranton Branch. Now he's returning to NBC in the blacklist as the eccentric criminal mastermind Red Reddington who turns himself into the FBI claiming they both have mutual interests. The Blacklist premieres Monday, September 23rd at 10 on NBC. Thanks, Lauren, and get ready to turn up the volume on your TVs. We're joined by the Dan White Sextet, six recent Ohio State graduates who recently made their debut on Columbus Alive. The group has just released a new album called New York Sessions, which they crowdfunded on Kickstarter as well as a grant from OSU. Get ready for DW6. <laughs> Well, that's all we have for today. Be sure to join us next time for the latest on campus entertainment. I'm Asia Gore. And I'm Alice McConaughey. Have a good night.